As Herpa is continuing to work their way through the Iceland Air livery, so are we. In the past, we've already taken a look at two 737 MAX 8, one in the light blue tail livery and one in the yellow tail livery, and now we have a MAX 9 in the magenta tail livery. And that, of course, calls for a closer look which has once more been made possible thanks to the great prices of the FMB shop. If you're looking for great new aircraft models, check them out. I left a link to them in the video description below. And with that, hello and welcome to a new episode of Review, where we, as mentioned, will take a closer look at our Boeing 737 MAX 9 of Iceland Air. At the front of the box, we have a cutout, so we can get a glimpse of the aircraft model inside. And on top of the box, we have the Iceland Air branding. The back side of the box is the usual disaster from Happy Wings, so we have yet another cutout. The only real interesting thing here we can mention is simply the fact that this is a limited edition. And here she is, the Boeing 737 MAX 9 in the current standard livery of Iceland Air, but with the magenta tail. Now, as mentioned, I've already reviewed the 737 MAX 8s with the light blue and the yellow tail. If you're interested in seeing them, then check them out. They should pop up in the top right corner, but I will also leave links to them in the video description below. But what can this latest iteration from Harper Wings do for us collectors? Is it worth our money and time? We'll find out by taking a closer look at it, starting off with the tail section where we on the vertical stabilizer have the Iceland Air branding and of course then the magenta stripe. On the fuselage we then find the full registration code of the aircraft and the Icelandic flag. Towards the very tail of the aircraft we also have a bit of detailing around the APU exhaust and when looking at the top of the fuselage we do also find the addition of a set dome. This might be a tiny bit oversized but overall I would say it is still within acceptable margins. Now, if we move to the front of the aircraft, we can see across the fuselage the billboard writing of Iceland Air. What we also find here at the front section of the aircraft are some static ports and underneath the cockpit windows we have the name of the aircraft. Notice just above the name of the aircraft we have a few more lines here. I, however, was not able to identify what that exactly says. If you know, then feel free to share your knowledge with us in the comment section below. Apart from that, the cockpit section itself then also offers us the cockpit windows with the nice metallic edges around those. And of course, the window wipers have been printed on as well. But the aircraft model could really have been helped along here if there had been just a few more printed details like some petal tubes. It doesn't help with the rather generous amount of white in the livery around this part of the aircraft than to have that few printed details. They could have really elevated the aircraft model here, but HAPA unfortunately failed to do so. If we then look at the engine nacelles, at least here we have some color with the dark blue of ice and air and some safety markings as well as the silver leading edge that has been printed on. That looks quite nice as well as the physical detailing of the engines, very lovely with the chevron nozzles and also from the front, very very nice, you can see the engine fan blades. On the fuselage just above the wings we then find the two emergency exits have been printed on and behind that we find the now infamous third or additional emergency exit of the MAX 9. And that leads us to take a look at the wings as well, starting off with the top side where we have the different flaps, slats and spoilers carved out quite nicely actually and we also have the markings for the emergency exits printed on. The underside of the wings offers more nice physical detailing and we find the full registration code of the aircraft printed on once again. Then of course we have the winglets of the Max for me, still a bit too bulky, but they do look nice with the Iceland Air branding. Then the landing gear on this aircraft model is the now updated standard landing gear for 737 MAX models from Happy Wings. That means they have been height adjusted, giving them a much better and more realistic look, but we are unfortunately still missing printed details around the front landing gear. On the belly of the aircraft we then have a hole in the fuselage for a stand which is not included with this aircraft model, but at least there aren't any printed details being destroyed by it, so I guess I can live with it. And then finally we of course also have the doors to the cargo compartments printed on here at the back of the aircraft and also here at the front of the aircraft. So there we have it, the Boeing 737 MAX 9 in the current standard delivery of ice and air with the magenta tail from Happy Wings and scale 1 to 500 and what can we say about this aircraft model? Honestly speaking, I am a little bit disappointed with this aircraft model and it's not because it does much wrong. I mean, it's certainly not doing anything less than the last two 737 MAX releases from Happy Wings with the Iceland Air livery. But I guess for me, the novelty of the new Iceland Air livery has just, well, 
worn out a little bit. So a model like this really lives from the livery because Harper doesn't add much to it themselves. And because the livery doesn't excite me that much anymore, and also the magenta livery that has to be said is my least favorite ice and air livery, it just doesn't quite win me over. And that is despite the really good 737 mold from Happer Wings, and also despite now having the height adjusted landing gear, which is great. So unless you are a super Iceland Air fan and just need to have every single model that is out there, I guess for most collectors having one or two of the 737 Max 8 would be sufficient and there is not much need to splash the cash on another model that doesn't do anything more than what we already have. On the other hand, it is not a bad Harper Wings model, it's perhaps just not one of their best. And a little detail I also would like to mention is, if you are interested in it, do check out the placement of the set dome. Mine was quite a bit off-center as you can see. I don't know if this is a widespread issue, but just check it out before you get the model, just to be sure that you get one that is as you like it. Now, with that, we have reached the end of today's episode. If you have enjoyed this video, then don't forget to leave a like. If you are new around here, why not hit subscribe? And with that, thanks so much for watching. Hope to see you soon again. I'm checking out and bye.